Hello and welcome to your lesson for Tuesday, May 19th. I hope you guys are all doing well, staying safe at home. Let's get right into it because we have quite a bit to go through today. Deadline, all late work needs to be turned in by May 26th. Your report cards, your final grades are going to be due sooner than you think. So if you do have late work and you do wanna make that effort to bring up your grade, please make sure you have it in by the 26th because after that, it will not be counted. Another reminder, go ahead and take the week eight assessment if you haven't already. That will be due on Thursday. It's an assessment based on the plague and the Magna Carta. And as always, come to office hours if you have questions, if you need help, use that time to talk about your grade if you need to. Let's go ahead and dig into some history. Okay, as you know, for the past few weeks, we've been in the Middle Ages. From the year about 500 to 1400, we had a lot of things happen. The fall of the Roman Empire, which started the Middle Ages, all the way up to the fall of the Byzantine Empire. That is the eastern portion of the Roman Empire, which went on way longer than the western portion. But we had so many things happen in between. Feudalism, the Magna Carta, the Crusades, the Black death. We're slowly exiting out of this time period to see what happens next. That brings us to the Renaissance. This is a period that arts and literature and learning really flourish, really became important. People started to turn back to the knowledge of ancient Greeks and Romans that was lost after the fall of the Roman Empire. We're going to talk about the Renaissance for a little bit today, but we're not going to focus on it because we're getting straight to the Reformation. Reformation is a time of great reform for the Christian religion. And when I say reform, think of the word change. A lot of big changes happen with Christianity. And don't forget, Christianity is a big deal in Europe during this time. It's the dominant religion and it's entangled into politics. So it's not just, oh yeah, I go to church on Sundays. Yeah, you do too? Okay, cool. No, remember the Pope was at the top of our feudal social structure. And even though feudalism at this time had come to an end, the church still had a lot of power more power than kings. So keep that in mind. We're going to talk about how all of that changes with the Reformation. Then after that time period, we will go to the Enlightenment. We've studied a lot of world history, but you haven't heard about the United States, right? It didn't exist yet. After the revolutions and the time of the Enlightenment, you're going to start to see the United States come into play. And that will take you all the way up to eighth grade US history. You will learn more about that in the eighth grade, but for now, I want you to focus on the Reformation. We're gonna let vocabulary take it away so we can go over these time periods and you know, have some hot rhymes in the process. Uh, it's the Renaissance. Let's go. There's so little art in the dark age. Just a couple jokers like in a card game. But things change and those hard days turn into the renaissance. Now art pays. Let's get classical, take it back to Greeks. We're smarter now, we're practically geeks. The Medici family will pay you mad doubloons if you paint something that doesn't look like a cartoon. So we add perspective, paint in 3D. Make the background small, it's easy. Raphael, Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci and Donatello. Hey, aren't those the Ninja Turtles? Yeah, that's it. But the Sistine Chapel didn't paint itself, kit. Mona Lisa smiles. That's so new. Sculpt Greek and Bible dudes in their birthdays. If you're sick of eating the same thing for lunch, stand up. Nobody's thinking because it's cool to be dumb. Stand up. There's no art, just guns and greed. Stand up. You need a renaissance. Stand up. If you're sick of eating the same thing for lunch, stand up. Nobody's thinking because And you think God hates you? They didn't question what the priest told them Until a couple of scientists got emboldened They said, I won't take your word as the truth If you want me to believe, you better show me some proof Poof, this was the scientific revolution How you like them apples like Isaac Newton Now everybody thought God made the earth And put it in the center of the universe Copernicus thought it was the sun at the center Like the gums at the center of a, a blow pop Galileo's telescope proved the earth move. The Pope said Galileo was a fool. Actually, the Pope 
couldn't handle the facts Cause science kinda gave him like a panic attack If you're sick of eating the same thing for lunch Stand up Nobody's thinking cause it's cool to be dumb Stand up There's no art, just guns and greed Stand up You need a renaissance Stand up If you're sick of eating the same thing for lunch Stand up Nobody's thinking cause it's cool to be dumb Stand up There's no art, just guns and greed Stand up You need a renaissance have you sin? Yeah, like every day. Well, if you pay me lots of money, I can make it go away. That's what Catholics did, selling indulgences, till a monk named Martin Luther wasn't feeling it. Wrote 95 theses, attacked him up. Said the church is too fat, like a Reese's cup. We need to be more personal with Jesus. His friends protesting, so they're Protestants. Over in England, we fight Henry VIII with like 30 ladies that he wanted to date. Now you know how dads wanna play ball with their son? Well, his wife Catherine wasn't giving him one. So Henry asked the Pope, yo, can I get a divorce? But the Pope said, no, you gotta stay the course. What do you do if you're a king and your church says wait? Well, you start your own church if you're Henry the Eighth. If you're sick of eating the same thing for lunch, stand up. Nobody's thinking cause it's cool to be dumb. Stand up. There's no art, just guns and greed. Stand up. You need a renaissance. Stand up. If you're sick of eating the same thing So that video went over quite a bit, but today, as I mentioned, we're focused on the Reformation, where we start to see a huge change in the Catholic Church. Have you ever stopped and wondered why there's so many Christian churches out there? How did we get from just one Christian church, which would be the Roman Catholic Church, to something that looks more like this today? Yeah, that's a lot of different kinds of churches. The thing to keep in mind, though, is all of these different kinds of churches you're looking at are all Christian churches. So how did we get from just the Roman Catholic Church to all of these different Christian churches that you see today? Our essential question for today is how can new ideas change the way we live? Christianity is such a huge part of everyday life during this time. It literally did change the way people live. After watching this video, you will be able to identify important ideas and people that played a part in the Protestant Reformation. We're going to play Kahoot on Thursdays. I hope you're going to be up and ready to participate in our Zoom class. Oh, and by the way, I'm giving extra credit to all students that show up to class this Thursday. It's something that I want to do to reward those people that are still actively participating. So please make sure you're there. So as usual, you'll have a video with the slides. And then you're going to take notes. This is just a little bit different than what I have been doing. So instead of check for understanding questions, I want you to take in notes because we're starting a new unit and we're going to give you a lot of background information. The template for the notes can be found on Schoology in the week nine folder. I will show you how to access the notes. Okay, so I'm going to take a minute to go over your closed notes and how you're going to complete those. This can be found in the week nine Schoology folder. First, you have to be familiar with the tools. If you decide to complete this digitally, which is way easier if you don't want to print, you're going to need to use the zoom tool because you might end up with something that looks like this. Use your zoom tool so you can really see what's going on. I'm gonna get pretty close so I can see everything. As we go through each slide, each slide will have a number, some of them I'm going to skip, so keep in mind you might have to go back and look at the slides on your own. Schoology folder, week nine, that's where you can find them. List an example of the weakening of the Catholic Church. When we get to that part in the video or when you review yourself on the slides, you're going to put your answer here. And so on and so on. So you're just filling in the blank, same closed notes we used to do in class, but digitally. You guys also have the option to print this out if you want to, and that file can be found here. So you would just print this out and write your answers. That's another option you have. Either way, you're gonna submit this and turn it into Schoology. Get this done before Thursday because I'm going to include questions based on our notes in our class Kahoot. And don't forget, Zoom class this Thursday, be there. First of all, terms you should know, Protestant Reformation. Let's take a look at the word Protestant. 
that is a member of one of the Christian churches that separated from the Roman Catholic Church during the Reformation. In the 1500s, someone named Martin Luther, not Martin Luther King, Martin Luther, went against the Catholic Church. And if you followed him, that made you a Protestant. Today, about 900 million people, 40% of Christians identify as Protestant. Someone else you should know, Henry VIII. Henry VIII is a super interesting guy. If you ever get the chance to learn more about his life, you should Google that. He is the King of England that established the Church of England when the Pope refused to give him a divorce. He had a very messy personal life, but he changed the course of history when he broke off from the Catholic Church and made his own church. Now, there's several reasons for the Protestant Reformation, and most of them have to do with how the Catholic Church loses power over time. Let's go over how the Catholic Church lost its power. First, there was corruption within the Catholic Church. As a priest, or nun, or a monk, you made promises to live a certain way in accordance with the Christian religion. A lot of people were not following through on that promise, and the church lost respect because of it. Another reason why the Catholic Church lost power, the selling of indulgences. You might have heard this mentioned in the video. So when you pay your way to forgiveness, that is an indulgence. So instead of doing good things or following the seven sacraments, which is part of the Roman Catholic religion, things you were supposed to do as a good Catholic, people would just pay money for forgiveness. Many people viewed this practice as wrong, but during this time, nobody could prove otherwise because a lot of people could not read the Bible. It was written in Latin, which a lot of people did not understand. Only priests and monks, only members of the clergy were allowed to read the Bible for themselves. So everyone else just had to follow along with what they said. There's a long history of popes and kings clashing. They did not always agree check this case out. The church, as we know, was wealthy and powerful. King Philip IV tried to tax the clergy. That means tax the church. When the Pope threatened to excommunicate him, that's not a good look for the king. He had soldiers kidnap the Pope. They released him, but the Pope died soon afterwards. So you can see there's a lot of tension between kings and popes. They're not agreeing and they're struggling for power. The fourth reason for the weakening of the Catholic Church. The position of the Pope lost a lot of respect when the Catholic Church could not agree on who was a legitimate Pope. There was a period of time where there were multiple Popes. Now, usually there's supposed to be one Pope, one leader of the Catholic Church. But because there was at least three Popes at one time battling for that title, now, eventually they sorted it out. They appointed a legitimate Pope, but damage was still done to the credibility of Catholicism. Now I'll be skipping some slides for the sake of time, but you can go into the week nine Schoology folder and review the slides for yourself at your own pace. And here is Martin Luther once again. Martin Luther, a German priest who disagreed with many of the Catholic practices, was especially outraged by the selling of indulgences. He felt that the church was selling false salvation to uneducated people. So Martin Luther knew that he, the church couldn't guarantee that they would go to heaven just because they were given money for forgiveness. He thought that the church was taking advantage of the people that couldn't read the Bible for themselves. So Martin Luther does something unheard of. He writes down 95 arguments against indulgences, also known as the 95 Theses. He famously writes down these arguments and posts them on the church doors in his hometown. In these Theses, he argues that the Bible, not the Pope or church leaders, was the legitimate source of religious authority. So you can imagine that the Catholic Church doesn't like being told that their leaders are not the supreme authority. Luther was excommunicated and he started his own church called the Lutheran Church. Many people happily followed him because they were fed up with the way the Catholic Church was doing things. One other awesome thing that L Martin Luther did was translate the Bible into German. Remember, everything was written in Latin and only clergy could read Latin. 
So for Martin Luther to translate something into a language where people could understand was huge. Martin Luther was not the only person that believed there needed to be a huge change in the way that Christians were worshiping. John Calvin, a French humanist, started another Protestant branch. John Calvin and Martin Luther did not agree on everything. One of those differences, John Calvin, or the Calvinist, believed that salvation came from God's grace and that it was already determined who was going to heaven or hell. And don't even think about trying to change your path because the Calvinists believed that your destiny has already been decided. There's nothing that you can do to change it. So notice how they're still Protestants, but it's very different beliefs. As people start to break off from the Roman Catholic Church and read the word for themselves, they end up practicing very differently based on their interpretation of the Bible. Okay, remember Henry VIII, he is the one that started the Anglican Church, also known as the Church of England, and he made himself the new head of the church. Now remember, the head of the Roman Catholic Church is the Pope, but the head of the Church of England is the King, King Henry VIII. Again, he started this church because the Catholic Church would not let him divorce his wife. So he took matters into his own hands, started his own church. Take a look so you can see a quick review of all of the causes, all of the things that weakened the power of the Catholic Church. Things like not agreeing on leadership, breaking the promises that they were supposed to keep, disagreements with rulers, and selling indulgences, also known as guaranteeing people can buy their way into heaven, all of these things damage the reputation of the church and had its followers thinking there has to be a different way. The Catholic Church made many efforts to fix the problems that the Protestant Reformation brought about. The Counter-Reformation was a Catholic reform movement, meaning change, where the leaders worked to correct abuses and to get more people following the Catholic religion once again. They started the Council of Trent to meet and work on the, on the issues that were listed above. And the church also decided no longer to sell indulgences. Probably a good idea. Take a quick look at the map. As you can see, this is around the 1600s. Look at how fast we're traveling through history. The yellow represents the Roman Catholic territory, the people that still follow Catholicism. The red represents Lutheran territory people that followed the teachings of Martin Luther, the Calvinists, people that followed John Calvin. You can see there's pockets of people following throughout Europe. And the Anglican Church, also known as the Church of England, rightfully so, England is purple. The leader of this church is Henry VIII. These Protestant churches take over different parts of what used to be Roman Catholic territory. Get this done before Thursday because I'm going to include questions based on our notes in our class Kahoot. And don't forget Zoom class this Thursday. Be there. Make sure you come to class. Stay safe at home. And I will see you on Thursday.